Good to see all of you. You know, Sunday, if you haven't gotten a Mother's Day card or flowers, time to do it. Time to do it. Uh, because Mother's Day is just a few hours away. And I love this, um, this cartoon that says, Mom, we've hired a few people to fill in for you while you relax on Mother's Day. We've got the cleaner, the chauffeur, the chef, the nurse, the seamstress. I don't know what the other person is on the end. And the clergy in the back there as well. Um, there's another old joke that goes like this. That you know why God created Jewish mothers. Because God couldn't be everywhere God's self. <laughs> mothers... I think it is safe to say, a part of the reason we're all here. For without them, we wouldn't be here. And while not everybody is a mother, everybody is certainly a child. All of us have different kinds of moms and different kinds of experiences growing up. And from those experiences, we learn lessons, for better or for worse. Um, Tonight, I'd like to share with you some lessons I've learned from our Jewish mothers, our matriarchs, if you will. And I want to do it in kind of a a unique way. And let, let me show you what I mean here. We have two very famous people in the Torah, Aaron and Moses. Aaron and Moses, and they teach us about various different things and themes and virtues and also what not to do. Um, But if you take the first letter of Aaron's name, which is an olive, and the first letter of Moses' name, which is a mem, that gives you what word? Ima, basically, which is the Hebrew word for mother. Okay, we have another set here, Esther and Mordechai. If you take the first letter of Esther's name and the first letter of Mordechai's name, you have Ima, exactly. And then finally, if you take Elijah and the word Messiah, you have Eliyahu and Mashiach, an Aleph and a Mem, again with Ima, exactly. So you have some men in there, but these are really critical people, factors in our Jewish tradition. They, of course, equal ima, or the root for the word mother, an aleph, and a mem. So Aaron and Moses, what do you think the quintessential thing is that they taught us? What do you think they taught us as the center core of their message? Leadership, that's a good guess. It's, It's true, it's a very good guess. Life is good, too. Those are all correct. Patience, that's, that's very good as well. 40 years. Love, did you say? Well, let me give you a hint. If I mentioned the Passover story, what would you say? Matzah, not matzah. Freedom, exactly, freedom. They teach us freedom. Now, just bear with me for a moment. What is a mother's main responsibility is to hold her child close and then to give him or her the skills and qualities they need to go be a free person, to go out into the world and make a difference. We're going to talk about how successful we've been at that or not, but suffice it to say, freedom is really an essential piece of what a parent does. In the world of psychology, we call it uh, self-differentiation. That is that beginning in your teenage years, you separate from your parent, as you know who have raised teenagers, and hopefully that child differentiates themselves and becomes a full adult. And then you are in adult relationship with that human being called your child. Esther and Mordechai taught us about how to be proud to be Jewish. You know, we talk about Judaism, and when um, a couple will come to me who has a child in kindergarten, they'll talk about faith and what it means, and I always say it's not so much about ritual, but it's about identity development. 
to know where you came from. To know where you came from. And this is a really important thing for children to have roots and to know their ancestry. And then Elijah and the Messiah teach us to do your part to make the world better. And hopefully our mothers taught us that, either by example or by watching what our parents didn't do and then doing the opposite. <laughs> right? These are really important and critical lessons for us to consider and to think about. But all of these teachers really had mothers behind them. Even these themes had mothers behind them. If we take, for example, Aaron and Moses teaching us about freedom, well, they didn't know it by themselves. They learned it from three different women, one named Pua, one named Shifra, and one named Miriam. These are the women who saved Moses so that he could find his freedom to reach his full potential. Miriam, his sister, of course, and Pua and Shifra, are the women who nursed him and brought him to safety to make sure that he was cared for so that he could live out his potential. A parent's job is never done, of course. But boy, if you set your child on a way, on a path, and they go out and find their freedom, they have now differentiated themselves from you to become who they're supposed to be. And the women of Judaism, our ancestors, set the Jewish people on a path to freedom, for without them, Moses would have never become who he was to help make the world what it could be. Be proud of your Judaism. I think that's an easy one. Esther, if we think about the saving of the Jewish people, it was a woman who first was nervous and tried to deny her Jewish faith and said, no, I just want to be regular. I just want to fit in. And through a little prodding through her uncle Mordechai, but through her own integrity and purpose, she said, I am a Jew, and let the chips fall where they may. She was a little wiser than that. She worked the system pretty well, too, to make sure we got the outcome that we needed. But without Esther, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here. And then, of course, Elijah and the Messiah. Uh, Elijah, of course, is the prophet that's supposed to announce the coming of a better time, and that Messiah is supposed to come from the house of David, which comes from our foremother named Ruth. And who was Ruth? Ruth was what we call the first person who chose Judaism on her own. She said, your people will be my people, your God will be my God, and I will go where you go. Right? That is a powerful thought, that the saving of the world will come from the womb of Ruth. Those are powerful lessons to teach somebody. Do your part. Go out and make a difference. Whatever that might be, small or large, do your part. That is a quintessential Jewish message as well. As we, I mean, I could go on for hours and hours about the effect that our matriarchs had on making us who we are. But you know, we can individualize it too. A, thinking about if we're mothers, how we affected our children but more as children, how our mothers affected us. And so the two questions I would leave you with, and I'm happy to chat about it for just a moment, is what lessons did your mother teach you? And what are the virtues of your mother you would like to emulate? Anybody want to take either one of those? Arlene. Kindness, your mother taught you kindness. Did she do it in words, making you be kind, or did she do it in her actions? Do, say it one more time. She showed, she showed you, and she, she, just through her actions, she did. Thank you, that's so beautiful. Yes, ma'am. Karen. Family first. Family first. Family first. I love that. I love that. Do you, you had a comment. Respect. 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 And, you know, so the fifth commandment of the Ten Commandments is honor your father and your mother. I think that was written by parents of teenagers, but um, that's a different story in a different sermon. Barbara. Yeah, my mother taught me by example and being involved. To be... You involved? 
How about that? Absolutely beautiful. So, so beautiful. Vic, perseverance. perseverance. Wow, I mean, if we go back to the list of these women here, I mean, they are the uh, Pua, Shifra, Miriam, Esther, and Ruth. That they are the essence of perseverance. And it, it so beautifully said, Rachie. Your mom taught you the two wrongs don't make a right. That is beautifully. Is your mother here? <laughs> All right, very good, very good. Uh, Diane. You know, Pollyanna has a negative connotation, but I wear it with pride all day long, you know? I'm going to live in a world that I view as good. Even when it's bad, I'm going to try and make it better. I love that idea. Uh, Mr. Elter. You choose to be happy. I love that. I love that. Yes, Didi. Didi. So I'm going to end this sermon now before I get into trouble. Beautiful. I mean, that is so spot on, Dee Dee. I mean, that is just so spot on. Anybody else? Ed. Make sure you're wearing clean underwear in case you get in <laughs> That is true. Well, that is a heck of a place to end. But I will tell you this. I will tell you this. The lessons of our mothers, the lessons of our mothers um, don't stop with the women of the Bible. They live on to this very day. And I would encourage us every time we say the Amidah, when we pray to Sarah, um, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, that we include our mothers and our grandmothers and our great-grandmothers in that because we are who they were, for better and for worse. And understanding those lessons and virtues uh, is a way to really honor Mother's Day. It's not just about our mothers. It's about all mothers and the influence they have. With that, I say amen.